Quick note here. This is what the printed circuit board will look like once it's finished. You'll see in the video that I did not have the appropriate thickness for this for these tracks, but that's fine. Just maintain the principles and route with the appropriate width for the current expected. Okay, so the fan out is finished. Let's go view the sh rest of the connection, show all. Control W to continue routing. We are on the top layer, our width we're routing at is 10 thousandths of an inch. That's good. In general, you can do top traces horizontally, like have them go horizontally, and bottom traces can go vertically. But see here, I can go up this way and then take my other track up that way. Hmm, is that what I want to do? Good question. Good question. Maybe. Let's test it out. I already feel like I need to flip some of these components, but we'll see. Okay, so I made some adjustments to the components, and I'm going to route this. This is not optimal placement. Even the um, the reference design, it it's placed much better than how I have it. Like if I put these two components further up, then I don't have to do this winding trace thing in order to stay on the same top layer. But feel free to do your own thing. I'm sure you will have... I'm sure many of you, once you try it out and do it, you'll have some creative ideas. Or you can follow the same design. You know, it's it's fine. Or your routing will end up better than the reference design. I like to place my connection when I see that dot. So this is cool. If I route this way, uh, will it automatically change my shape? The shape of the copper board is the question. Very interesting. And it will. Wow, that's pretty cool. Now, this is rule-based, so it says that traces need to be a certain distance from the copper pore polygon. That's perfectly fine. And I can manually change the polygon shape anyway. And we have one more track here. So place this right here. So place the track. Excuse me. And there we go. Now this shape. Move it. Great. Uh, this is kind of weird. I'm going to change my grid to 10 mils. There we go. Great. And for these pads, they're ground. So... The thermal relief is nice and all, but I would want to make these spoke widths thicker or wider. So that's the benefit of having rules-based PCB design, because they will automatically make the tracks wider for the ground. Let's go ahead and move this track. Yeah, looks okay. This is a mess, but... It's fine. This right here, potential manufacturing issue. Why? Because this via is so close to this trap. I mean, realistically, it'll probably be fine, honestly. But avoid 
them if you can. I'm moving my reference designators. Oh, this is C. Okay. Let's control Z to fix that. This is C. Uh, okay, and if I really pay attention when I'm moving a reference as a whoops, control Z. Let's filter this out here and just do text. If I'm moving a reference designator, it highlights the component. Make sure your reference designators don't overlap pads or pins. Rate. So our PCB is more or less done. I'm going to click on this mounting hole plate it, make that invisible, that reference designator. Let's look at it in the 3D view. What's nice? Hold down the shift key. And before I finish, it's not actually quite done, is it? We need to add some silk screen. So I'll show you how to do touch ups and some silk screen and things like that to assist with the overall design.